Yeah, I really like the the interviews in which you can. Um, it seems like you just like grab the person. I can't wait to the bar. Okay, I'm gonna try to get that early. I want to get to the gym early. I'm seeing that opening gym early so I can get some shots up. The film to me is very much about um, the sort of. Uh, you know, a sort of double consciousness, or like the, the the layer of the film being incredibly formal, having like a formal life, and then it having this sort of meaning that's one contingent on the make the, the viewer, um, but simultaneously sort of um, pre-constructed by the maker. And so there's like all of these completely separate yet like um, you know working together type of modes, which is. You know, I think not so often seen in film in which you're like, you're, you're like mimicking the way in which our mind works or mimicking the way in which skin even works, right? When, you, when you're dealing with someone, especially in like Western logic, you're projecting onto their skin, but then there's like a, an, an underlying meaning or an underlying relationship that is, that is beneath that. And then there's like, there's always two for me. I mean, like the film, I like to say is like a, a Rorschach test for the black experience in which it's something that is, and then there's some meaning that's added to it. There's no community representation, self-representation in the South, um, specifically, I mean, with a lot of black communities. And so it's always being projected onto. And so we really never, just never know what it really is like in there. I think everyone there is bound together by, the, one, the history, but also the ruralness. Because whether or not you're middle class or lower middle class or quote unquote um, in poverty there, like your distance to the outside world is like all the same. And so you're ge geographically connected in this really strange, strange way. And I moved to Alabama, was sort of making images in the same sort of vein that were attempting to sort of deconstruct like my own image, you know, um, deconstruct myself. And, you know, for me, you know, the second that you become conscious of being perceived, the second you become, you know, I think maybe it was middle school, a little bit later than a lot, when you realize that the way that people are seeing you is based on something that had nothing to do with the way in which you've experienced them or they've ex actually experienced you, but some like um, just preconceived construction, you, you begin to sort of just question everything in some sense. And so I, I was working from that vein and then in some sense, it became like culturally, I don't want to say, actually trendy is the right word, like it's almost trendy to be, um, to have a conversation about consciousness and racism in the US. And I hope that it's persistent, but for those like myself, it's something that is really long standing. But I could have played, or I could have ran bass. I practiced, or I did good. A lot of people use the, the words sort of insider or, or outsider. Um, but I like to think of it as, um, as like a participant or as, you know, sort of rehashing memory or participating in some sort of history. Um, at least that's how I, I sort of experience a place. And so I went there to teach and um, that's where I met one of the guys, uh, Quincy Bryant. And then while I was there teaching, I met another, um, Daniel Collins, while I was coaching basketball. And... You know, I knew them for three years before I started filming. Um, didn't really have any intention of making a film when I went there. I was there to work in the community. Sort of everyone knew me as a community worker. It's weird when, you, when you're dealing with, you know, images or place or people, even friendship, um, any idea, you know, the more time you spend with it, the better you know it, you know? And so for me, the discovering that's mentioned at the beginning of the film is like, you know, what is it like for me, like a black African-American, an African-American, to look back, to be in the place that is the origin of this place, and what's my relationship to it? And the longer I'm there, the better I can articulate what it is, because, you know, when you first meet someone, you're so wrapped up in, you know, your fantasy of them, or, you know, um, uh, superficial aspects, just because it's the way that human beings, I think, interact with a lot of things until 
we sort of break through um, those initial um, characteristics. Oh, they were deep in the seas. They was already deep in the seas, and I was like, man, well, I'm just gonna I just stick to what I do. What's used in the film are very explicitly moments, right? So I'd film for one or two days, and if I have like one image that is like powerful or meaningful, or it's just like this, you know, like when you walk out of the trailer, when I walked out the trailer and the storm was just like coming, it's like you have to film forever for that to happen. That doesn't happen sometimes in life, period, you know? Um, and so I was like, I know I want moments, so I have to film for a really long time. And I think, not I think, so most documentary films have like 200 hours or something, or 50 hours or 100, you're 1300 hours, right? 1300, so many hours. Because that's, that's what it takes to get, you know, um, once you have those moments, I, I, I realized that, you know, they're all connected because of the way that they were shot and also because, um, I think when you film, in the same way in which like you live in a culture that's a media culture, if you go out to make images, you're going to make images that resemble the media culture, you know? So in some sense, if I create my own language, I double down on my own language and I'm shooting because that's the language in which I'm like articulating things through. So I realized that there started to be connections between the things that I was filming. I'd be attracted to certain angles, be attracted to certain times of day. And so within that, you know, the film is shot over five years and it's condensed into 12 days. So the entire film is edited from sunup to sundown. So that's one rule. Um, the second rule, every shot has to be um, related by a very clear concept, like, or, or, and or geometry. For example, like Quincy is holding his baby and it has like the angle of his arm and then it cuts immediately to a goldfish in a bowl. It has the same angle. And there's like an inherent visual fluidity between those two. So you're not like, oh my God, that was a weird cut. You're just like, oh. And so like, if you can accomplish that over a long period of time, then like you're, you're jumping time in a really bizarre way. But then also you're creating meaning sort of unconsciously. And so that happens with color, with camera movement, with very clear concept. I love that, that it reminds you of your childhood because I think, I think that's the way in which I was looking to film in hindsight based on what you said. The way I articulate it is like the difference between the photograph and the, the moving image is that um, in, the, in a broad sense is that the photographic image is everything in the world, everything meaningful is supposed to be in one thing. It's all supposed to be there. And this is what you put on the wall. This is what you show the person. Um, and you know, if it's a flower, you're embedding beauty, meaning, life, everything into this one thing. Um, and so what happens if you make that moving, you know? How do you, how do you like ground something that's like infinitely meaningful into um, something that is a, a time-based image? Because what happens with traditional film is very much like corporate language, is that all of the images are neutered for the arc, you know? Um, all the images are, are, are sort of stitched together in order to get, you're following someone to do something in order to pr prove your next image, to prove the next image, to prove the theme. But if you make each one infinitely meaningful and then you bring that together, then it's like, why a child looks at this forever? Because it's just like, there's nothing else. It's that everything is in that, you know, it's crazy. It's like, yeah. When you take the camera and you, you make images and you deconstruct them, meaning decontextualize them and take them out of that arc, you're forced to bring your own logic to it. And then you're, you're seeing, kind of for the first time in some sense, the entire structure of meaning. I think, you know, like you saying that just like fills my, my heart and mind with like so much happiness. I think. The idea that the film could be a model for visualizing um, any community, you know, I think is, is almost ideal because for me, all of the, while in some sense, all of the goodness in the world is connected to story, also all of the terror in the world is connected to story.
Um, and so if you can remove um, the social constructs which you know reduce people and meaning and movement and gesture and ideology from these like these strictures which I think happens in the film and the way in which you're filming um, then you can like almost reconsolidate humanity in some sense and I know that sounds lofty because it really is but I, I, I refuse to not believe that like visualizing something um, is, is not the first step in uh, you know foreclosing it you know and so if you can liber if you can liberate visuality then you can you know liberate something else as well they're like inter intertwined you know you know I think I realized from making images that no racism is an idea you know but the material of racism is film and photography you know you actually need something to prove it because without that then you're just telling someone something and they don't know what that looks like but once you put that idea into the world and then you make an image and then you present that then the person's like oh that's what you were saying yeah that's true and so this is where the change needs to happen in some sense you we need to change the material so that the concept is proven false I felt that if if you if if I made the film with like almost obscene beauty with just like this like tripling down this like on world on your shoulders beauty um, that it would be viewable by anyone because beauty is you know the most powerful currency in the world um, in some sense and then by default it, you, if you can organize the film in the correct way or use the right moments and you can embed a really subversive relationship to um, image making um, so I really think that anyone can watch it um, I don't expect everyone to the two main protagonists have seen the film they came to the premiere um, and they I think well they were pretty speechless I'm really interested to see what the community says about the film um, I think that there's a, a lack of creative attention focused on the communities in general. And so I think what you see is um, very quintessential and uh, reductive representations. And so I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's always challenging. Like when I, when I take images of someone, all of my images are dealing in this plurality of visuality and truth. There's a, um, always a, a moments of silence of a person like, being confronted with something that is a little bit less traditional. Um, so we'll see.